No surprise in the implementation. We are subtracting step size times velocity times the estimate of the derivative. And that estimate stems from our central difference formula. In the resulting diagram, you see that overall we achieved the right effect. The sine curve is being shifted, but we definitely need to take care of the boundary, at least when our signal reaches the boundary. And let's try an experiment. I'm inserting the number 30 here, meaning that I want to start off with 30 periods of the sine, not a single period of the sine. And to make the image less cluttered, let's use a number of 500 down here. This is the result that we get. You can see the artifacts at the boundaries, which we already know. But there's a second phenomenon. You can see that the amplitude is slightly growing. We're going from the blue curve to the green curve. So this looks unstable. The higher the frequency that we feed in, the more unstable this becomes. This is why I started with a sine wave and not with some rectangular function. The good thing is, if we combine this way of shifting a function with diffusion, diffusion washes out the high frequencies and saves us from instability.